Hi, my name is Ali Shesava from Breacher Digital. In one of our previous videos, we talked about an RC snubber for switchboard power supplies. And we did mention that sometimes the size of the spike is so high that we need to move on and design something called an RCD clamp. In this video, we're going to do exactly that, and we're going to go step by step through how we design an RCD clamp for a switchboard power supply. So here I have got a, uh, let's say, a flyback converter. Here is the flyback transformer or, let's say, coupled inductor. And in our previous videos, we actually measured this and we said that there was a certain amount of leakage. Now, this parasitic leakage, which I've shown by this little inductor over here, rings with the parasitic capacitance of the FET. And therefore, during the switching, uh, when, the, when the transistor switches off, you get massive amounts of ringing. So if I were to, to show the voltage across this FET, what would happen because of the ringing, instead of the classic look, which would be on a textbook, which would be just a step, you would get something like, like this. Now this ringing frequency is dependent on the value of the leakage inductance and the capacitance, and we talked about this in our measurement video and also in uh, the RC snubber video. Now, sometimes this spike here is so high that an RC snubber is just not enough. At that point, we move on to another circuit called an RCD clamp. And effectively, what we are trying to do is to clamp this height at a certain point so that it does not break down the voltage limit of our FET or the switch. Now what happens is at turn off the potential at this point starts increasing and we design a circuit so that when it approaches a certain value, and we talk about that a little bit later, a diode turns on and allows a different path for the current to flow and therefore clamps this voltage. So the RCD clamp circuit will look something like this. So you've got a diode to start with and then you're going to have to dissipate the energy somehow. So then you've got a resistor and then you need to damp it and therefore you've got a clamp. And that's why it's called an RCD clamp. Now by choosing the correct size of the value of this resistor, you determine at what voltage here the diode will become forward biased and therefore turn on. So for example, if you have got a 30 volt FET, maybe you want to set this switch on period of this diode at 25 volts. If you've got a 600 volt FET, you would want to, to, to have allow yourself 30% margin, so 30% lower than this and so on. So the trick is how do we calculate the value of this resistor and this capacitor so that the, the, the system will start clamping at the right moment. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. <coughs> Here, I'm showing you oscilloscope plot of exactly that circuit, but this time I have put a clamp on, and you can see that at a maximum voltage of 25 volts, this circuit is turning on, and therefore this spike is being clamped at 25. Without the RCD clamp, this would go up here and start ringing and, and could damage the MOSFET. So, the things that we need to calculate is, is, is basically based on the information that we know. You've got an input voltage for simplicity. Let's say the input voltage of the power supply is 10 volts. Then let's say that you have got a 30 volt FET. And therefore you want to clamp at 25 volts. So the V in, which is 10 volts, plus V clamp has to be 25 volts and that is this line up here okay then another few things that you need to know it's, it's in a uh, pa uh, flyback converter the output voltage is going to get reflected from secondary onto the primary uh, so that voltage also needs to be considered. Again, we did another video uh, where we uh, talked about transformer and parameter referral and we know that the Output voltage referred to primary is V out times the turns ratio. Let's say for simplicity that we have got 3.3 volts on the V out, and let's say we've got a turns ratio of 
2 to 1 and therefore what is reflected or seen on the primary is 6.6 .6 volts. So this voltage here is 10 volts plus 6.6 .6 volts which is 16.6 .6 volts. Now we need to calculate the V clamp which is the voltage from there to there and as you can see V clamp is 25 volts. This is the voltage that we want to clamp at minus this 10 volts here and therefore V clamp is equal to 15 volts. Okay? So you will see an equation later when we plug these numbers in we get a value for the resistance that will actually start the, the diode to become forward bias at exactly 25 volts which is 15 volts higher than the input voltage. And this is the equation that we need. First an acknowledgement, these equations are uh, taken uh, from the excellent book by Christoph Passo, uh, which is the switchboard power supply, spice simulations and practical design. Um, the proof is all in there and also we have created a, a spreadsheet whereby you don't have to type these in into a calculator, you can just type in the numbers and the, the spreadsheet will calculate them for you and this is available for download. So we would like to calculate the va value of our clamp. Okay, we just worked out the value of V clamp. So first you select the maximum voltage that you can tolerate. We said that was 25 volts. Then we said that you calculate the V clamp. V clamp is V max 25 volts minus the input voltage. In our case we said it was 10 volts and therefore you're left with 15 volts. So you know this value. You know this value. We said for simplicity that the turns ratio was 2, so you know this value, and we know that the output voltage was 3.3 volts, so you know this value also. Then the switching frequency of your power supply, you obviously know. The leakage inductance is what you have to measure on the transformer, and we've got a really nice video where we use the body 100 in order to measure the leakage. So this one you also know from your measurement. And finally, the peak value of the current you know because typically you design the, in, uh, the inductor, transformer, everything based on the value of the current. We also have a power supply design software called Breacher WDS, which when you, if you use that to design, it will give you the peak value. So you can see that you have got all the unknowns and therefore you can, value, you can calculate the value of our clamp. Okay? Now, if you remember, the circuit looked, let's draw it over here. You had a resistor, you had a capacitor, and you had a diode that went like so to the FET. So we also have to calculate the value of the capacitor. Now, unlike the, um, the snubber, where the value of the capacitor determined how much losses you had, the value of the capacitor on an RCD clamp is actually not determining the, um, the losses as such. Uh, it is only needs to be big enough in order to make sure that the, the voltage remains constant during the period that the clamp is operating. And five time constants is not an unreasonable value. So again, that is taken from Christoph Basso's book. You take five time constants, you have just calculated our clamp. So you know this one, you know your switching frequency, you know five, you, also you can also calculate value of C clamp. One thing that you do have to do is to work out the total power loss and the power loss is half of the leakage inductance I peak is square switching frequency multiplied by V clamp over V clamp minus NV out. Again if you look at this equation I know the equation is big but there is nothing here that you do not know. Half you know a leakage we know from my body up my hundred we have measured it Peak current we know, switching frequency we know, V clamp we know, V clamp we know, turns ratio we know, and V out we know, and therefore we can work out the power loss. Again, uh, a point uh, to note, uh, the power loss, the thing that is going to get hot is going to be around here, so if you have got a plane, it is, it is good to, to, to solder this in, to, to, to a plane so that the power can dissipate very well. Also, please bear in, in mind, depending on the size of the chip resistor that you use, what will cause a hot spot on your, uh, on your PCB. Typically, I try to, 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 to go somewhere between 
50 to 100 milliwatts in order to make sure that the PCB does not get too hot. So I've created one. This is the one that we actually use in our workshops. Without the uh, clamp, it's hard to draw on black. It was doing something like this. Now I have turned on the clamp. I've, you can see that at 25 volts, the clamp turns on and it gets rid of this. I beg your pardon, this should have been like so. Just one, not many. Um, you can see that at 25 volts, the clamp turns on and then the ringing continues. Yeah? If I add an RC snubber also, the ringing also disappears whilst the clamp is still clamping at 25 volts. There we go. This is how we go and calculate the capacitors and resistors of RC clamp. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you in one of our workshops.